things and I've washed them and kind of in some, now oh, that one, the lid on that one's not too good. If the lids aren't good, I'll get you another lid. Go out here and catch some stuff. If there's something you're particularly interested in too, I mean, if you came here today to ask a question about something, I got a little discombobulated until I figured that PowerPoint thing out and that smart board is smarter than I am. So if there's something, you know, if you have a particular crop that you're growing, so just grab, you know, I've got just all the, yeah, some of these lids are bitter. Yeah, they're ancient. Here, use that one. That one, that one worked. Yeah, I had these things sitting in a hot car and it cooked some of the lids. Thank you. All right, so let's get out here. I'll tell you the first stuff that I'll start with here. In fact, I just saw something. I probably stepped over it and it disappeared. Yeah, to start with. Yeah. I mean. Ah, right. uh, it'll come. There, there's, there will be more. There's aphids in here. Okay, here's. All right. Here you go. Yep. Because there. Okay, here's. Um, if you guys haven't seen a little tiny harlequin bug, and it takes all of my effort not to squish this thing. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so here you go. Here's the nymph. Another guy in there too. This little guy. Oh yeah. Oh cool. That's a surfed fly pupa. So you you get a gold star. You 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 caught you caught the beneficial. This is what happens. Okay. So it's that little. See this? It looks like a teardrop. Yeah yeah. It looks like a blue a brown or green teardrop. You guys need to know what this looks like when you're scouting right now. That would be a beneficial for me. Okay. So pass this, if you guys haven't seen it, it's in this vial, it's in that vial, and we'll get it on the, get it on the camera. And here is a little tiny harlequin bug. That is trouble, and let me tell you something about harlequin bugs. They're gregarious, so when you see one of them, there's gonna be 20 more. So the plant that you find them on, you're gonna, what I would end up doing when we had to control these things, I would soap the plants that those were on and I would flip the, le the leaves over because I'll bet you there's some eggs in here, okay? Here's some more harlequin bugs right here, see? And, and you can tell this feeding, see how it has that stippling feeding? That little br that brown feeding? I can tell, I can tell from a distance. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's really going, I could drive by this road. There's another one. Now see, you guys, I have to do this, see? Oh, oh, I just feel so much better. I feel better now. I'm sorry. I just, I can't help but squish them. No, do squish the Harlequin beetles. That's the bug. That's how we're controlling it. Okay, good. Well, then I'm doing it right. I thought I was doing a cardinal sin there, but I... So let's look around. Uh, yeah, you got them all, you got all, all sizes of Harlequin. Yes. Okay, yes. That's bad. You know, here's, I just say, hey, come here. This is, this is my bubble wrap, man. So I'm, I'm popping those things. And the other thing that happens when you guys see Harlequin bugs, you got to start looking around because there's going to be eggs. Those little, those little white and black barrel-shaped eggs. Here's white flies. Have you guys seen white flies? Here's brassica white fly, but there's not many of them. They're probably controlled. Those, are, those have parasites that control them. All right. Squash leaves. The winter squash leaves. There's a like a, a cluster of bronze-colored eggs. Squash. That's squ uh, squash bug. It's squash bug. Yeah, gold, gold. Yeah, gold eggs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, bronze. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I soak those. When I'm scouting, you guys, I look like a Borg or something. You know, I've got my, I got a little soap gun because I'm soaping and I'm squishing. I mean, I'm. When I walk into a field, I'm. Huh? What are you soaping them with? Joy. No, I, well, I use insecticidal soap. Kind of, like yeah, sometimes they're a lot yeah. Now I could use I could use Dawn, yeah. but you're not you know you're not supposed to for organic production. So we'd end up buying like those two and a half gallon jugs of soap. And the trick with soap is it's best to use soap right when you make it up. Some people let soap sit around, and when soap sits around, it 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 de it breaks down. Okay. Now they have stuff in the store. Oh, right, okay. Here's squash beetle. That's an epilacna. That's this is similar to Mexican bean beetle. Or did you get this off? It came off a squash. Squash. Next to a squash. Looking, we'll probably find a squash. Parasite yes. Larva too. So this you can actually control these with the parasite that um, that Pediobius fulvulatus will attack the larvae of these. That's the one. In fact, that's one of Pat's claims to fame that we didn't talk about. 
was he, Pat was the first person to use parasitic wasps on Mexican bean beetle. And that was another one that was a great one at Jake's farm, man. We controlled acres and acres of beans. I'd go down there and these guys would be, you know, Chris would be going, look, there's not a larva out here. And I'm like, I know. They, we did, you know, it worked really well. This is squash beetle. Squash beetle. Yes. There's also a squash bug. Yes. That is more like and squash pine borer. Yes. Right. And those are bad too. I mean, I nuke those. I have them my little soap thing. Mm -hmm. That's I was able to keep my. What do you got? A flea beetle and then some little <clears throat> winged insect. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what you got. A little aphid. My squash is done. Okay. Yeah. You got a. Uh, you got a two-lined. This is a two-lined flea beetle, mm -hmm. which actually mainly attacks crucifers. It's over here because this stuff's a little green. Oh, did you? Okay, I was going to say. All right, cool. All right. What's your name? Right. And so that's one of the things, too. The flea beetles that attack potatoes aren't the same ones that attack. Really? Yeah, they're different species. So they're... Well, you slime dog. I thought... I lost the one. I had to find Okay, well, then that's good, then. Now, this is a surface light cocoon. Yeah. Teardrop shape. It's teardrop shape too. That's one of the ways. Yes, and, and they'll turn brown though when they get a little bit older. And I'm going to get this buffalo clover out of there. I hate that stuff. All right. Yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's the nymph of a harlequin bug. So they start out this. Bugs are always the same size when they start, you know what I mean? They, the adults right. and the tinies yeah, look, look sure alike. Yeah. So, yes. So those are, so what's I mean, I've got one. one patch where I probably look. Find we, we, we could spend four hours right in this patch right here. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Okay? So hold on to that. Okay. We need to, we want to keep that one around. In fact, has, have they, have you seen this, Lisa? Show, yeah, have you shown? Oh, okay, good, good. Good. Yes. I want my mummies. Yeah, right. So when I'm counting aphids, I'll tell you what happens when these aphid parasites get going. You're counting them. You flip the leaf over. 80% of the aphids are brown. You know what I mean? Is I don't need to spray for aphids. I'm at Kenny Haynes's and he's 30 acres of broccoli. And we go out there and he's like, I need to spray for aphids. Well, he had three kinds of ladybugs. He had some kind of fungus attacking the aphids. And he had these, these aphid mummies. I said, you wait three days and call me. He called me back three days later. He's like, I didn't need to spray. They all disappeared. And you know what it costs to spray 30 acres of, of broccoli? About 300 bucks an acre. And an opportunity cost, the time taken when you could be doing weed control. So suddenly he's jumping up and down because he's like, holy cow, the bugs did it for me. And, I'm, and, and Kenny was the one that shot those extension agents, you know, by saying, well, I'll grow 30 acres of broccoli organically, you know, and that's telling all these farmers they can't grow organically. So we got bachelor buttons in here, right? Isn't that what that? Oh, is that zinnias? Zinnias. Okay, yeah. A little farmscaping patch that's reseeded itself. We'll get to it. It's okay. directly across from us, you know. All right. Um, and that's it, too, folks. A whole lot of the beneficial insect plants. Just let them go to flower and go to seed, and it's not automatic. You don't even have to plant them again. Right. Okay, got they, they, they're great self-seeders. Yes. And you get the control. Have you have a squash a bug, cucumber on. beetle, also oh, known as squash yeah. beetle, mm -hmm. right? Or twelve-spotted. So that's diabrotica. You have those are flea beetles that you got off of collards or crucifers. Did you get them off a of crucifer? Okay, yeah, that's weird. Oh, that's okay. That might be a squash one. You're right. It doesn't have stripes on it. You really got to look at them. Yeah, I'm looking at that little thing. That looks like. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's a little brown thing. I'm not sure. Let me look at it. It's a little, yes. LBM. There. Yeah. Here. That's good. We need to hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Okay. Those are your ground. Those are ground you just caught. Wow. Those are all predators. So what that we black thing right there crawling around. That little worm. The, the little one, that's a, that's a ground beetle larva. Yeah. Okay, you, okay, good? yes, they're good. All of these are good. The rove, the, there's a rove beetle in there too, this little wiggly one that looks uh -huh. like a dragon wiggling around. Uh -huh. All of these are great predators. What people don't realize is when, when we used to scout, we'd only scout during the day. Well, one of the things I started doing when I'm going to Seattle was I was staying in these hotel rooms. I've been to Seattle 41 times in the last five years. I got one of those pet urine detectors, ultraviolet, 
and started looking around my room at all the stuff that was glowing. And I'm like, oh, I'm not having that pillowcase on my bed because <laughs> certain things glow that you don't want to get oh in contact with. All right, so I'm taking those off. So the next thing I do is start going out at night. I'm like, why am I scouting during the day? You go out at night. These beetles are all over your plants at night and they eat caterpillars. Any, well, they'll eat any soft-bodied insect that'll hold still long enough for them to, to take them down and they're great. So what's happened here with these ground beetles is you've got enough ground cover here that this, this field is probably just loaded with, 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 uh, with ground beetles. I wonder what's under the black. Under the black hmm? Under the black. Under the black, under the black yeah. 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 They're probably, yeah, because it's warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you can, make, you can make what they call beetle banks. You know, the British are crazy. I mean, the British have taken this beetle stuff to, you know, I think they're crazy. And that's coming from me. That's saying a lot. And, and you know, the British have amateur beetle clubs. Like what this would be right here is these guys meet once a month and they come out to a field like this and they catch beetles and they're like, oh, he caught a hyster beetle. Oh, I haven't seen that. You know, if, you, if you've ever watched Nature Channel, they have these guys that are running. It looks like something out of Monty Python with entomologists, right? <laughs> so what happens is what you've got there, what you, did you find those all in one little, oh, yeah, man. There you go. See what he, okay, what he did, there's, there's the importance of your overwintering site. So you having a little raggedy spot like that with a bunch of vegetation, that's where those things are hiding. The thing that I was gonna say that the British do, they have something they call beetle banks. If you look it up on the internet, the British have, they have different beetle bank structures for different beetles. I mean, this is just crazy. What do you got that's there? Just the larva. Oh, okay, this is a um, squash beetle larva. So this is, a, this looks like, this is the same as like Mexican bean beetle larva. It's an epilacna. And so we have, a, there is a parasitic wasp that's available for that. It's that pediobius. So the bean beetle and the squash beetle are two different, but the larva looks very similar. Well, they're, they're both epilacna. They're both in the same genus. So they're, they're, they're the only two species of coccinellids that we have here that are pests. They're coccin, they're ladybugs that are pests, okay? And so the pediobius work really good, and then other ladybugs that are eating. All right, I was, no, that's yeah. a harmonia. Oh, I haven't seen this before. It has a, an M or a W on its head, mm -hmm. and then the other identifying character that's real hard to see. Um, it has two indentations on the back part of the elytra, way back here where I'm touching. The one on either side, because this ladybug, this ladybug comes in. This ladybug comes in all different colors from solid red to solid black with two, it, ha, it looks like that Chilocris lady beetle. Here it is, here, come here. What's the one that's yellow? That is a squash beetle, well, it got away. So that's a lady, it's still a ladybug? It's a ladybug, but it's a pest, it's a pest lady ladybug. ladybug. Right, so there's, n there's not many that are pests. These, the eggs of that ladybug, I found it on the same plant. What are, yes. Yeah, these are ladybug larvae hatching out. Wow. Just covering all the open. How do you tell them when you look at them from a dark colored apron? Well, when this gets a little bigger, it, ha it looks like, what did you say this was on? It was on this okra. Okra, okay. Um, the, 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 it hatched out of an egg that was gray colored and then there's a little tiny larva right there. You know, these are really small. It'd be better if this was, in fact, I should have brought my ocular. I got magnifying glasses and, yeah. and I'm scoping those out. 